Yes, thank you, um, Kushika. Um, yes, so um, I think I will start with um, two um, slides of our presentation, how um, everything started with the club. Um, so um, first, I would like to ask you if you see that, um, everybody sees that um, now? This, um, is it uh, okay, the slide? Do you see it or not? I um, think you see. Yes, yes yeah, you can perfect. see it, but yes. you're not in presentation mode. Okay, I check this now. It's yeah, better. Perfect. Okay. Great. So, um, Sustainability Club was born one and a half year ago. Um, yes, um, first of all, um, it was a community of myself. I built it up for digital transformation issues. And uh, then um, as I deal with sustainability topics in my job, because I'm working in sustainability department at Daimler, I thought uh, why not building up a club where um, employees can um, connect each other, employees who are interested in sustainability. And, um, and then I got a connection with my colleague in USA and she already did that. So we said, okay, we have a club for Portland, we'll have a club in Germany. So then we, we started from grassroots. We, we were, um, first of all, two persons. That was myself and uh, Melanie, you see on the picture left hand side. And afterwards, uh, more people came on board who were interested in this topic. And um, we started with the community um, to bring together the people. And we first started um, with the Echo Challenge. So um, we did a challenge, um, one moment, where the people can join and um, they can save CO2. They had to fulfill uh, several tasks. And um, yeah, I started from the scratch. I had nobody who was interested in it. And then um, one week after, there were 15 team members on this homepage for the challenge and we saved 20.5 kilogram CO2 and we had um, um, a very good um, seat in the challenge overall. It was a worldwide challenge and uh, this we did together with Portland. So this was the, the, the birth of this all and here you can see some picture what we already did. Um, yeah, we do um, um, this challenge. You see in the back side the screenshot um, this is what it looks like. It's a, a, a ready software where everybody can use that. It's named ecochallenge.org and everybody can join this. Everybody who wants it from every company and you can build a team and start this. And um, also um, we did a workshop um, to go uh, further with the club to develop this to um, make some, build some network for Daimler. And uh, the last thing we did was um, our um, challenge, plastic free challenge. And now I will switch to the real club. So this is our community, the sustainability club. And we started for um, two month um, challenge um, for um, plastic free challenge. And um, yeah, and this is what was the result. So we had all this stuff here in um, two months, all these ideas. Um, yeah, and it really um, was moving the people. We bring together the people and we were bringing them on board. So these were all ideas from Daimler employees in the eight weeks. We had, um, I can explain you shortly, we had some tasks. So the first week the task was to buy um, grocery without plastic. So you had to go out and buy something without plastic and then you had to post it in the community. And the second week um, there was the, the task um, to make um, foods um, living longer. How can you make it? You make um, some marmalade or you don't buy it um, and stuff like that. Or week five was plastic free body lotion and stuff like that. And week seven plastic free um, um uh yeah to to plastic free care stuff so yeah and so um this was moving big and um i never thought what is possible in this plastic free world before i did or we did the challenge um we did it together with sarah and she is doing the club with me at the moment and um, she was the host and uh, yeah we did this uh, task every week 
and the people were um, yeah were posting. So I can go in week one to show you how that looked like. So this was the post, and then was the task um, what they should do, um, and then um, yeah, this was an example how it can be, and then they post here what they can do, and yeah. So that is what the club is doing, but not only that stuff, so a lot more um, stuff. So um, yeah, now um, I would say um, I would give it up to you to, to, yeah, to give the questions to me. I don't want to talk all the time because I think it's good that you can ask because it's a lot of information. Thank you, Rebecca. I have one question already. Um, you said you had the idea of putting up a community like this and somebody in US as well had this idea. What drove you to, I mean, is it personal interest which which made you put up this community or how did you get this idea of uh, creating something like this? Um, it was, um, I was pitching at uh, Digital Life stage in Daimler and Digital Life um, is in Daimler, um, yeah, the, the real digital network where we were pitching ideas and uh, we were there with our club um, or with the idea to have something for sustainability. And then I um, got to know my colleague Melanie, who is also want to drive sustainability topics. And then we thought, OK, what we can do together? Because we were both not elected at the pitch for the big stage with Ola Kalenius. So we said, OK, we are not on the big stage, but we are grassroots. So we can start on the scratch. And uh, so um, that's what we um, thought about. How can how can we deal with that? How can we make it? And I had um, the contact to the States, to Olga Ole, which is my colleague from the club in Portland. And so we said, OK, we make American German connection and start with that stuff here in Germany, too, because uh, Portland is doing that for some while now. They do also um, other stuff, electronic device recycling and a lot more. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Further questions? Yeah, I have a question that's maybe related uh, to yours. I mean, you mentioned this is a grassroots initiative. At the same time, sustainability uh, gains more and more relevance. So is there any link to, um, let's say, an, an organizational anchoring or are you planning on that? Um, um, I'm working in the sustainability department, so we have an official space which we are dealing with corporate issues on sustainability. And um, as I'm also dealing with sustainability issues all day, I thought to build something up um, for employees that they can switch ideas, they can have a stage for small topics because you don't put everything on the corporate level. You put the small topics when in Unterturkheim, for example, somebody uses another waste uh, organization system, you don't post it on corporate level, that's normal. So I thought, how can we give a stage to these people? And that was also the idea to build a club. And so we started with the club and uh, now we are one and a half year old, but we are already um, not official, but um, we are doing it nearby our jobs. We have uh, the permission, but we are not official hanging in the stability department or somewhere because we want to be corporate rebels. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Thanks. We are corporate rebels. Yeah. yeah, keep your rebellion going then. <laughs> but maybe not so long. Maybe someday we are not. We will not be uh, the corporate rebel if we have a sponsor. Yeah. So this may answer one one of my questions, uh, which is uh, what what is the added value? Did you think thought about that or? Um, is there a, 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 a value for Daimler ex explicitly? But as you already answered, uh, as you start as a grassroots initiative, you uh, maybe have thought about that or not? 
Um, yes, um, we did this workshop uh, with our five people, um, what I showed before in the presentation, because that was the question we also um, asked ourselves. That's why we went to the think tank in Witzemann and did uh, um, one day um, um, a workshop and uh, and an HR workshop and asked ourselves what do we want to do with that? What is the purpose of it? What do we want to move at Daimler with that? So and um, the result was um, that we want to give, as I said, a small projects a stage and that we want to build um, a worldwide um, communication network for sustainability interested employees. Yeah. That was the result of that, that we want to be the club for people who say, OK, I want to move something in sustainability, uh, but I'm not working in sustainability department, but I want to move something. I want to give my ad added value to that uh, topic so I can go to the club. I can write uh, um, uh, an article. So we have a um, yeah, possibility that everybody who's interested can write an article himself um i'm the 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 um um yeah the, the chief of that i'm looking how how can you say in english um yeah uh, chef redacteur uh, yeah i check the articles and uh then they go online yeah and uh, we want to give the possibility for that so we try or our goal is to establish more clubs worldwide because now we are in asia in usa and germany yeah We have some hands up also in the um, in the chat. Maybe we can also just um, give them the opportunity to ask their questions. Um, I don't know who was first. I think it's from bottom up. I don't know, but I'll just ask Uta first. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Chef Redakteur is editor in chief. <laughs> yeah, I did remember it. I know it, but I didn't remember now. I don't know why <laughs> um, I had something else in the head. And um, Thank you. what what I think is uh, what I wondered is if there is some kind of input in all those articles um, where you said this was a contribution, for example, also to a CO2 strategy of uh, of Daimler, for example. So because often companies, how to say, they've got a strategy and they've got KPIs, but often I think we as community managers we know that we have a high contribution in our communities by the input of the members, right? This is also often the argumentation, what we have. We are a grassroots community and we bring input. And now, precise question is, have you been able to show to your management, for example, for input by articles where you were able to uh, validate the contribution in uh, CO2 reduction? So to deliver fact and figures to the management. Um, yes, we have fact and figures because we did um, the eco challenge and there we had real facts and figures what we saved uh, in CO2. Um, you can see it here. Um, we have the results here. Um, the team was named Eco Busters. And that was what we saved. It's in English because it's an English platform, but um, we saved uh, 63 miles traveled by foot. Um, we saved um, 86, eight gallons of water. And um, total we saved, um, as I said before, um, I have to look it up. Yeah, I don't have it in it mind, but we saved five, total. Yeah, yeah. 20.5 CO2. Yeah, it yeah. didn't sound, so, uh, honestly, it didn't sound much. Uh, that's why I wondered if you get also, because you are a club, that you get from other departments the input um, where you combine this knowledge of a company and to deliver this. So when I see now, for example, roughly 900 gallon of water, this is a lot, right? This is already a different mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. But as I said, um, yeah, but uh, if there's input from articles where you can say, wow, I could never imagine that we have already such kind of activities and we can use the, um, this, uh, what was it, the so sustainability club to prove 
that we have here a lot of activities which we can bundle in form of that community. Maybe this was a second loop, but to precise my question, my, my need for an information. Okay, okay, sorry, then I didn't get it right. Yeah, and um, the thing is, as this is completely grassroots, not official, we did the echo challenge with an official with an um, open site for everybody. It's not Daimler corporate software, the echo challenge. And so uh, we started with a small team. We didn't start on corporate level. And this is all was only an experiment as it was the plastic free challenge. So we are not um, dealing with management issues and we are not going to management presenting some figures. But uh, yeah, this uh, this homepage is a, a nonprofit organization in the States, but it's not uh, related to Daimler. Everybody can um, join the challenge there at the, at the Echo Challenge. Everybody can do this. It's um, it's open. Yeah. OK, thank you. Now I got it. Sorry for the second loop, but sometimes it has to drop on the second layer to understand it properly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this was the result from 2020. Yeah, what we Perfect. did. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So we have one more question from Mona Pfaffmann. Hello, <clears throat> uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I work for Daimler too, um, a division of Daimler, the financial services arm or the mobility arm. Um, my question to you is also understanding that this is a, a grassroots club um, based on volunteers um, contributing um, I assume also that you are contributing uh, in addition to your day job. Um, yes. <laughs> I have currently also um, more by accident than intentionally planned um, created a community that is moving, right? So um, a lot of energy and excitement behind it. Um, I would like to maybe get a little bit of insights from you how on a mm -hmm. voluntary um, post-work <laughs> perspective are you managing multiple time zones, right? Um, and how does maybe a typical community manager day for you look like? First of all, this community is living definitely by motivation and team spirit. If, if we were not motivated, if we were not this team as we are now, it will not fly, it will not work. So this is completely voluntary and the people who join the club or who are in the core team do this because they love it and they are passionate about it. So, and also my colleague in Portland is passionate about sustainability. So she is doing a job from at the moment 12, 12 hour job or 11 hour. And she also has time to call, make a call with me at uh, 7, 8 PM and me too. So this is the thing. It lives from the personal um, contact from the, the personal respect and it lives from um, some people who are completely free from the from the freedom it is living from the freedom because we are completely free we can do what we want okay we have rules corporate rules for sure or rules for the community but besides that we are free we can do a, a plastic free challenge if we want to do we can do as we like and uh, we can um, make uh, calls and uh, talk about topics. So we leave that open, but we have kind of structures. So we have a sustainability cafe every month for new interested people. Then we have uh, every week uh, a call for, um, for the articles because we have the possibility that everybody can post an article. So that's the open, um, open call for everybody who is interested for the article. So we have that every week. And uh, we have a lot of topics. And uh, then we have a core team call, which is only for core team that Sarah, me, and uh, one other person. Yeah. So this is the organization. And we have also ambassadors who are talking about us, who are loving the topic and who are loving the way to, to present it to people. So this can only live if you do it beside the job, if you love it. Yeah, if not, yeah. it's dead. Thank you, I appreciate this. Sorry, there was a delay. I appreciate that. And this is how it works for us too. We are now, I think, at the breaking point that structure is needed, as you mentioned it, right? So we now have to um, find ways to, to organize ourselves. So uh, everything you shared already 
helped a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. At the beginning, yeah, it's not organized. Only that you know. <laughs> At the beginning, it was not organized. Truly said, very dedicated. Um, so thank you. And we have another question from Tanja Laub. Yeah, hello. Um, I've actually gotten two questions, very quick one. Um, the first one, you kind of just talked about it a bit, but um, can you kind of say how the percentages of the projects that are initiated by you as a community manager and by the volunteers or the employees um, in the community? So how is the balance? And the second one, I know of a lot of other corporations that also have a sustainable community. Um, are you somehow in contact with each other? Um, I know that the telecom has something similar. Um, yeah. Or they have something very cool. I saw this at the Digital Life Day. And um, yeah, and um, we were dealing with that um, some some time also and um, yeah i tried to um, to get some best practice um, um, yeah exchange and also um, in the challenge the plastic free challenge for example was completely um, built up by a community member before so uh, the community member was sarah um, she were posting in the community in the club that she did plastic free challenge at in berlin at Daimler Berlin and then I answered her post I said okay do you want to do it in the club and she said yes and so she did the plastic free challenge eight weeks completely by herself the structure was all by her it was the ideas were all by her but um, I did the communication part as I'm journalist I um, I did the posts um, the text and um, I, I did uh, the structure how we can do it in eight weeks and stuff so on. So um, yeah, I did with the plastic free challenge. I did not so much if, if I'm honest, but for the other stuff, the eco challenge, my part was um, yeah, 50, 60% and 40% community. Um, yeah, they, they joined and they, they did stuff. So community dedication, you can say. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Okay, there was a question in the chat, which was a little bit earlier. Uh, Christina asked, do you plan to go out to Facebook or other social media, I guess, uh, to address more people outside Daimler? Yeah, you already uh, mentioned the other company, but uh, you, perhaps the family members, friends, acquaintances, larger networks. So I can explain to you, if you do a plastic free challenge as I'm joined by myself, the family has to join it too, because if you have the topic <laughs> that you have to use a ketchup which is not bought, your husband has to use this ketchup too, because in this week it was forbidden to use bought ketchup or, or bought something bought in plastic. So that was also the experience Sarah had or the other members that they had convinced their husbands, um, their <laughs> their people are, they're living with um, to 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 change because they had to do the task for the challenge and so um, automatically uh, in private life they they changed uh, the whole setting and it was a yeah it was a real um, yeah adventure they posted also in the club and the comments it was really adventurous for some people yeah <laughs> but it was fun yeah thank you. Welcome. We just now had one more um, hands up, but I don't. I, I think it's not there anymore. Someone had a question. Okay, and there's another one in the chat from Maria. Do you set up annual goals which you want to reach with your community internally, or receive these from uh, from core team steering committee? Um, we have uh, annual goal. Um, we have, uh, we also, we thought um, our goal last year was to do a challenge. So this was the goal for 2020 and we did it in 2020. And this year the goal is to make another challenge. So that's why I want to put a question in this um, community here now. 
Um, is there everybody who has um, experience or saw, saw something interesting, which will be a cool challenge topic or a cool project, what, what we can maybe do in 2021? Um, I encourage you also to put that to the chat or just open yeah. your mic. Yeah, huh? because we are searching now for new challenge or for new yeah, new, new uh, project we can do. So um, yeah, but cool. And there's another question. Jakub, Juk, Patricia, there are so many highly engaged and motivated people in this call. I would be honored to host you in the International Women's Week. Ah, okay, this is an invitation. So it can be something crazy too. So if you saw something and, and thought, wow, this is cool. So maybe we can try it. Maybe you can post your contact to the chat so that people mm -hmm. can reach you if it comes somehow later in, into their mind, what could be interesting. Okay. If you still have questions, we still have four minutes. Um, please ask them now. So I, I, I'll, without raising a hand, as there's no other <laughs> in the queue, um, do you have uh, any any let's say concerns? Is for instance from the from the sustainability uh, officials uh, about your community? Do do they uh, intended to get somehow involved in your approach or? as a whatever, a quality gateway, a quality check? Yes, um, I was presenting it to my boss, um, E3, uh, because we are a sustainability department and she um, she's pushing me with that idea. And um, also we were presenting it um, uh, at several internal um, stages um, uh, and call um, communities or um, also inter internal um, um, events we were presenting um, our club yeah so we are um, yeah we are getting more people in the club and getting more people connected mm -hmm. but there were no claims to take that over it just left you alone in a um, positive way you mean take over by the management mm -hmm. Um, so at the moment, I think um, there was no uh, no no idea to take us over. But um, we at the moment we don't want it because it's too early uh, for this, and it's not. Um, it's at the moment we are only an experiment. We are not on the level to bring output to bring figures. If we are someday on that uh, point, then I think we can include the management, and we can go up to higher management. But now it's experiment time and we are just small 400 followers, not so much. Thank you. And it's not depending on the follower, it's depending on the, yeah, uh, what we can get out of the experiment we are doing. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome. Great, so your dedication matters, uh, not the number of followers. Um, keep your dedication and um, stay the corporate rebellions, which you are. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, really. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It was a pleasure for me. And some Thanks. ideas have been posted to the chat already. Oh, super. Wow. Yeah, I have to, yeah, to make a snagit photograph now.